I'm going to try and keep this intro fairly short. I usually do house tutorials for someone playing alone, but Minecraft is a multiplayer game and I don't normally focus on community projects, but an idea came to mind which I thought would lend itself perfectly to working with a couple of friends on a server. But of course this also works on a solo project, you just follow the same steps, but alone. Okay, let's get right into it, into this ravine community build. So this is the ravine that we've chosen. It has to be as wide as possible and preferably you want it in a nice area. Today I'm joined by Botbox and Adjust Me who will be my community building this town with me. So as I said, this is our ravine and the first thing we need to do is edit the ravine itself. Before we even start building anything, we need to edit this terrain to make it a little easier on the eye. And the first thing is removing anything that isn't stone and turning it into stone. That is probably the most arduous and boring task, but with three or four of you doing it, it actually doesn't take too long. Once you've done that, you may want to edit some of the terrain and add some andesite and cobblestone as a texture block and put them as sparsely as possible. So as you can see, the ravine looks a lot tidier now. It looks really clean cut, but not too stale with just stone. That cobblestone and andesite really help the texture. And I know I sped that up really fast and it will take you a little bit longer, but hopefully with a few people working on it, it will look very clean cut and well made. But before we start building, it's a really important thing to plan this out. If you do it randomly, you're going to end up with a mess. You need to place your houses, or your plans for the houses like I am with this yellow wall, at different Y coordinates. Now hopefully you can see that. All of the wool are at different points in the ravine in both height and length. All of our three houses are spread out throughout the ravine and we have one on one side and two on the other. That green wool is going to be a storage for use of all three people. Planning is very, very important in a build like this, especially when you're working with other people. You need to communicate. The red wall here indicates where the path is going to be. You can see it both zigzags across the ravine and crawls along the sides. That is a typical pathway I would make for this style of build. And you need to make sure that you don't overdo it because we're going to be adding a lot of extras to the ravine, try not to fill it up with pathways, make sure you have some gaps. This here is our entrance to the ravine town. And it's really quite simple, we're literally digging out a cave into the open area, going up very steadily. You don't want a staircase, it's not gonna fit. You need this gradual decline into your ravine to make it look really natural. Replace any blocks with stone that aren't already, and then put some half slabs to decorate. You also notice we have some log supports with some spruce to decorate. This is intentional, this is exactly the style we will be using for the rest of the ravine. On the other side, you may want to tidy it up and make it look like these logs are actually supporting the cave roof above it. But once you've done that, it's time to start working on the ravine town itself, and you really need to focus on the pathways first, replacing all of that red wool with slabs that make their way steadily up and down the ravine. The use of the Y coordinate is what makes this community town look really good. Using as much slab as possible, you can also throw in some staircase if you need to. This is roughly what it should look like. But you can also see that we're making some log supports. That's because the build really looks weird without any supports, even if it doesn't technically need them. These really drive home the narrative of this build. And that's what's important here, the overall effect. You'll notice when we get to the actual houses, they're mediocre, if that. It's the entire style and the crux of it is based on this pathway. You need to utilize not only the Y coordinate, but make sure you zigzag and it all comes down to how well you've laid out your red wool to plan the locations of this pathway and how well you're able to build these supports, which is why I'm giving you quite a good angle to be able to see them. And you can build them straight up, but you'll see that we've utilized a lot of staircases to give them a bit of shape. Now we decided to add some oak slabs in with our spruce slabs 
on the pathway to add a little bit of contrast. You don't have to do this. You can decide with your friends what palette you want to use, but I would recommend it. It does give a little bit of contrast from the path to the pillars. Now it's time to start actually working on the house, and it's a very, very simple technique. I literally have two pillars, but what is essential on this build is that you follow the shape of the ravine. If you have a flat, 90 degree angle house, it's going to stick out a lot. It needs to follow the shape of the ravine. So you'll see that my two pillars are actually a block apart, and you can see that by the oak fronted wall. The roof is very simple with some dark oak for contrast reasons, slanting upwards but also following the shape of the ravine. Detailing this is quite annoying, you need to add some blocks on the inside so that any staircases that you add will not leave any holes in the building. I then did a very simple window along with a few more staircases just to add that weathered feel and some trap doors just to give it some detail. Like I said, the houses themselves are nothing special, but it's the overall effect that really works. Let's go and check out what AJ has done. When we were building this, I didn't know what he was doing and he didn't know what I was doing, and we both came to the same design, which is remarkable. We were obviously on the same wavelength. The only difference is he added some cobblestone as a base, which I did not. Botbox, on the other hand, had a really tough time because he had to work directly diagonally, and I'm sure someone will have to do this because ravines are generally diagonally in-game. Now, the roof itself is quite simple, but when you get to detailing that oak-fronted wall, it gets a little bit difficult because you can't really add windows effectively, so adding some fences, some trapdoors, maybe a little bit higgledy-piggledy, it's fine. Don't get too worked up about it, if it's not working out, try something else. While AJ is working on the storage unit, Botbox and I are going to work on some other things. We also added a nice chimney on top because we thought it fit nicely. We're not actually done, believe it or not. It, this build is a lot more than just the houses and the paths, although that's all that we planned out. You'll notice that there's just two colours. We need to add a bit more contrast, and we do that by adding some greenery and some bluery, i.e. water. Adding some potted plants outside the house is one thing you can do, but we'll come back to that in a second. Let's just check what AJ's done. He's made a very simple roof with an open wall. There is no wall where this storage is going to be, but he's going to have a little bit of work there to just cut out everything else, but we'll come back to him in a minute. One thing that we will be doing throughout the ravine to try and integrate it and give it more colour is add these little patches of grass into the ravine itself to make it look a little bit more naturalised. The green really helps bring the ravine together, and adding these little patches wherever you can, or perhaps where there's a natural ledge, will really help the build. We used a mixture of jungle leaves and oak leaves to add vines drooping over our ravine, and even produced a bridge over the top later on. As you can see, these little things are very small in comparison to the houses or the pathway, but like I said, this is the type of build that is a narrative. It needs to be an atmosphere encased in a ravine, and that's really what we're trying to create here, so any little detail really helps. Just like the spikes coming out of the bottom of the ravine, using cobblestone wall, andesite, and a few other blocks that are also cobblestone related, you can make these really nice atmospheric boulders or spikes, but then we're going to go ahead and add some water. Now, bot Box told me I was doing it wrong, and you need to start from the bottom up, fill in each layer at a time so that they're all source blocks. This will probably take you quite a while. The storage room is now done, but you could also add, depending on how big your ravine is, a brewery room, and an enchantment room, and anything else that your public ravine needs for its inhabitants. So there is one final touch that we can make. At the end here, we can add a waterfall. It's such a simple thing, but just having everything literally flow, no pun intended, the build will be complete. And that's it, everyone. That is pretty much the build. Apart from a few finishing touches for those that are perfectionists, you've got a really nice atmospheric house system going on here, zigzagging through the ravine. Every little detail is important. You can imagine just how dull this would look if it was only the houses and the paths that we originally planned with our wool. 
the vines, the little inlets, the water, the boulders, everything needs to work together. But you can't really get a good feel from it using the replay mod like I am now flying through the air. This is what it looks like from the outside, but let's go into first person and take a much more up close and personal look at this build. So first off, this was a great choice of ravine. It's nice and wide and it goes really far back and integrates into a mountain, so couldn't have asked for better. Botbox and Adjust Me, who, as you know, built this with me, will be joining us on our first person tour round the ravine town. I hope to see plenty of tweets of people making it, but if you don't have any friends to join you, that's fine if you're just a single player user, you can still make a solo ravine house, it just might not be quite as atmospheric as this one is. So we'll just take a little tour around the houses. Obviously the interior was nothing special, we didn't focus on that, but you can make it go as far into the mountain as you need. You could have huge houses on the inside, these are just the facade. And here's the storage room that Adjust Me made, it's a very very simple thing, it's just an inlet with whatever you need. So as I said, it doesn't just have to be storage, it could be anything you like. And here's our little nature inlets that we did, these just help bring everything together. And you could even use them as lighting, you could put some glowstone with some green carpet on the end to light it up. And there is the dark entrance where you could, if you want, expand your ravine house into the darkness. Now I'm not sure why, and add just me in his house has decided to add a little office and that's it. Which is fine, you can do whatever you like with your house. And it's a great feeling to have a little town and everyone has their own little space that they can do whatever they want with. That's the whole purpose of this. Everything underneath comes together really nicely. Although people may not actually appreciate the builds from the bottom unless you unfortunately fall into the water, which I admit will be an absolute pain. One thing we didn't add was a ladder to get back out again. You may want to consider doing that. Although we flew around, people doing this in survival will fall a lot. So that's something that you need to consider. So all there is left to say is this was a really cool build. Thank you to AJ and Botbox for helping me out so much with this. They made it so much quicker and that's the whole point of doing a community build. Thank you very much for watching everyone. Good boy.